Remember the magic school bus? Seatbelts, everyone! Bill Nye, the science guy? Bill Nye, the science guy! Bill, 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 Bill! What about Cyber Chase? Cyber Chase, we're moving, we're beating Hacker at his game. Well, they were all made possible by the National Science Foundation, the powerhouse behind some of our favorite childhood shows. And that's not all. The NSF has also funded the initial research for the most important technologies engineered today. Our mission is to transform the world for a better tomorrow by driving discovery, inspiring innovation, enriching education, and accelerating access. So engineers are really thinking and planning for the world of tomorrow. The NSF funds about 25% of all federally funded basic research here in the U.S. In this week's episode, we take a look at some of the projects backed by the NSF's engineering directorate, which supports about 45% of all basic research and education related to engineering in our nation. With NSF support, Port, lithium ion batteries first appeared commercially in the early 1990s. Now they're the go to choice to power everything from phones to tablets to electric vehicles and drones. The problem? All the world's current mining operations cannot extract enough lithium and other key minerals to meet skyrocketing demand for these batteries. But Professor Yan Wang and researchers at Worcester Polytechnic Institute have invented a new way to recycle batteries. The new recycled battery are longer lasting and produce 83% more power. So if we don't recycle them, eventually we don't have enough materials to make new batteries. So that's what we, we do. We, that's why we call it as closed loop process. This led to the founding of Ascend Elements, a company stemming from the WPI research. Last March in Georgia, they opened the largest lithium ion battery recycling facility in North America. The factory can recover up to 98% of the battery metals used used in electric vehicles and gigafactory manufacturing scrap. When you think of magnets, you may be thinking of the ones that go on your fridge. But the NSF's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory is home to the world's most powerful magnet, including MRI machine and superconducting magnet. In order to measure molecular weight, you need these types of scales. And that's what we do here, is we measure a fundamental property of molecules very accurately. The Mag Lab has helped with many discoveries, including advancements in particle accelerators, which are used for medical applications like cancer treatment or nuclear energy. The NSF recently announced they would sustain the world's most powerful magnet lab through the year 2027. Engineers at Rice University have created a wearable device that can guide users with pressurized air. You can call it a wearable GPS, if you will. On the user's arm, through the sleeve of their garment. And so to proceed forward might feel like haptic cues that are moving forward on the forearm. Similarly, that if it may tell you to turn around and go backwards, the cue might go backwards across the forearm. And then if it wanted to indicate to turn left or right, you might feel a motion that could be considered clockwise or counterclockwise on the forearm. Users were able to interpret which direction the device was telling them to go an average of 87% of the time. And the material is easy to repair. If there's a cut on the device, you can just iron on a patch. If there's over a billion uh, people in the world with a loss of vision and a, another billion people worldwide with a, some loss of hearing. Um, and so this acts as a, a third way to communicate um, beyond sights and sounds, um, but instead through the sense of touch. Have you ever wished to be a fly on the wall? This is a flying insect robot. It weighs very little. It's about the weight of a toothpick. These bug-like bots can do all sorts of cool things, from crop pollination and search and rescue to disaster surveillance and sniffing out gas leaks. There's a lot of information carried in the air that we just don't know very much about right now. And it'd be great to have ability to, to, to detect that. NSF has funded six different universities to contribute to the robotic insect effort. Among them are the University of Washington's Air Lab, which also has their RoboFly weighing in at just 10 or 15 million that's less than a grain of rice, which could theoretically explore the solar system one day. Harvard University's Weiss Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering also created a microbot with two wafer-thin wings that flap almost invisibly, 120 times per second, and jump right out of water. We're here to help you have a home for where the investments could be coming from to fund your great ideas. Thanks for joining us. That's all the time we have for now. We'll see you right here again at Circuit News TV. TV.